Hey, 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 everybody. It's Paul Moore, and I am so glad to be with you here in Bigger Pockets land. Hey, let me know if you can hear me. Would love to hear from you to make sure you can hear me. I am, uh, I just realized I have the wrong camera working. So I'm hoping I can get the right camera, but if I can't, we are going to get started here in a second. Um, so, hey everybody, Paul Moore here with Bigger Pockets. Today we're going to be talking about seven reasons to invest in mobile home parks. So, welcome. Uh, it's a beautiful Friday here in Central Virginia. We're going to be talking about uh, reasons to invest in mobile home parks. I have been a mobile home park investor myself. Uh, and it has been a disaster, but I did it wrong. And so today I'm going to tell you how to do it right and make sure that you don't make the same mistakes I've made. So, um, I, we're going to talk about seven reasons to invest in mobile home parks. No one has told me yet if they can hear me. So, okay. Thanks, Derek. Hey, Derek, where are you from? All right. Great to see you, Jay. Great to see you, Chris. Hey, Nathaniel. Sunnyvale, California. So we're going to get started. We're going to talk about seven reasons to invest in mobile home parks. Now, like I said, I made a lot of mistakes. I've got a podcast called How to Lose Money. So you can think that perhaps I know something about losing money as uh, I did it for a profession in the past, apparently. But uh, I made a lot of mistakes over the years. And one mistake I made was in buying mobile homes, not mobile home parks. And so I highly recommend that you don't make the same mistakes I made in buying uh, mobile homes. Um, I My first flip property was in the year 2000, and I took a house. I got a house, and I was so excited to get this uh, house sold. I sold it quickly, and as I sold the house, uh, right before closing, the seller uh, told me, uh, I got a little problem here. I um, can't seem to sell my mobile home up in Northern Virginia. And uh, she said, would you be kind enough to take it in trade? She said, it is a great deal. It's a wonderful mobile home. Uh, and it's in a, a mobile home park that rents really well. And um, so if you would just take my mobile home in trade, that would be great. So I took all my profit from this deal, which was about $12,000 on a $25,000 profit I was splitting. And I bought this mobile home park. I took it in trade. It was a disaster. I had one bad tenant after another. They'd be late on payments. Uh, they always seemed to pay the mobile home park, so they didn't, you know, they, it didn't get carted off. But uh, they trashed the place. I had to go back and fix it and paint it. There was, I remember, a big snowstorm. We got stuck there when we were painting it. Uh, it was a, a nightmare. And another one, I actually bought another mobile home, and it was a, it was a double wide, which has got trouble written all over it. Uh, and it's out in the country, but it had a creek, it had three quarters of an acre land, actually an acre. And I thought, oh, this is a beautiful mobile home. I mean, people would love this. Well, I had a tenant for, get this, a rent to own tenant for about eight years that made pe payments faithfully. And I was so happy to have this tenant, but something went wrong about eight years into it. I was like already thinking about the $30,000 I was going to make when they cashed out, when they actually got their mortgage. Um, and, uh, the payments started slowing down. I finally got hold of her and she said, yeah, my husband and I broke up and I'm back at home in Maryland. And I, I subleased it though to some, to a section eight tenant. Well, trust me, she had absolutely no business, no business at all. Um, subleasing or being qualified to sublease to anybody. Uh, and she, the, these tenants, I don't know what these tenants were up to. They never met me. I don't know why they were so angry at me. They took all the appliances out, but I can tell you their story included, um, let's see, it included cigarettes. Uh, it included uh, a dog or, or dogs. It included alcohol or alcoholics. I don't know. It was a mess. And I had to get this thing carted off. I was about to make $60,000 when they closed on this rent to own. Instead, I carted it off and sold the lot for $15,500. Uh, that's how that ended. I got another story, but I don't want to bore you with it. I don't want to uh, make you sick any sicker than I've already made you. So, uh, hey, Stanislav, great to see you. William Powers in New York. John Thomas, 
William Knox, Derek, thank you so much for joining us today. So we're going to talk about seven reasons to invest in mobile home parks. Now, I don't invest, I don't recommend investing in mobile homes. Like I said, I've done it three times. It's been a nightmare. But if you've read some of my Bigger Pockets podcast, uh, uh, blogs lately, you'll see that I am of the opinion that real estate is largely overheated right now. The multifamily sector has gone wild. Uh, there are institutional investors. There is foreign money coming in and buying multifamily. There are all kinds of reasons that the multifamily sector is overheated. In fact, my company has had a, a lot of trouble. We've been a multifamily syndicator for years, and we've been trying to buy multifamily and had nothing but trouble as we tried to buy uh, multifamily properties. So we have actually expanded and we have started uh, investing in other deals from other syndicators. So um, that's what we're up to these days. But at any rate, um, multifamily is overheated. Single families. Has anybody tried to buy a single family lately? I don't care if you're in a large or small town. Tell me your comments about trying to buy a single family as a rental or a flip. They're very expensive. And it's become very, very hard to find single families as well. Uh, retail, I don't know. With Amazon and everything and all the empty strip centers around, I don't think I want to invest in retail. I'm concerned about offices. You know, a lot of people are using co-working spaces or, uh, you know, working down at my favorite church. It's called St. Arbucks. Get it? Give me a thumbs up if you like that one. Okay. But um, there are seven great reasons right now that I think that you should consider investing in mobile home parks. Not mobile homes, but mobile home parks. So reason number one, smaller cost per unit. Now a smaller cost per unit, if, if you're buying multifamily, you're often gonna be paying between 50 and $150,000 per unit. If you're buying single family homes to rent, depending on where you are, you might be paying between 50 and uh, half a million dollars to rent. Uh, to buy a rental home. But mobile home parks are often a very much lower cost per unit. I have a friend buying one right now for $10,000 per lot. Now, we're not talking about buying all the mobile homes. We're talking about buying land with infrastructure like sewer, water, um, you know, electricity hooked up to each lot. And so buying is much lower cost. If you can buy 10 park lots for the cost of one single family home or two multifamily units, you're spreading your risk. You're getting in and you're allowing yourself to get much more. I guess it's kind of obvious math. If you're paying less for each unit, you're paying less and you're spreading your risk, which is your, our second benefit, which is it is a good portfolio management technique to spread your risk. Now, if you have a single family home, and you have a vacancy, it can cost you thousands of dollars, not only to fix up what the last tenant did, but also to get it ready for the new tenant, to advertise, to market, to get it on the market. And it's a lot better if you, if you have 15 spots in a mobile home park and one goes vacant. Well, that's only a, what, six and a half, seven percent vacancy. And you can usually fill that because of our third reason that I love mobile home parks, and that is demand is very high right now. Did you know there are 10,000 reported people, uh, baby boomers retiring every day? The 75% of them, get this, 75% have less than $30,000 of savings. 50% supposedly have about zero in savings. So there's a crisis going on right now as apartment prices, as home prices, everything seems to go through the roof. There is a need for affordable housing. And so the demand is increasing all the time for mobile home parks. But the supply, and this is my fourth reason I love mobile home parks, the supply is decreasing. The supply is decreasing because uh, subdiv because um, cities, counties, they don't get a lot of tax dollars from all the infrastructure that they've got to send out to a mobile home park on the edge of town. So a lot of times they would like to zone them out of existence. And sometimes they'll even cut backroom deals with developers and say, okay, you own that mobile home park, get rid of that and uh, you know, turn it into a field or 
turn it into a, a multifamily building site, and we'll give you the permission to build this other project you want to do. So backroom deals are being cut. Cities and counties are eliminating. Sometimes people are just going, you know, getting old and shutting them down. So there's a decreasing supply of mobile home parks, virtually none being built in the country. I've heard there's as few as like 100, 100 per year being built. I mean, think about that. Imagine there were only 100 houses or 100 apartments being built in the country. There's something like that many mobile home parks being built per year and a whole lot more than that closing down every year in the United States. So there's a huge supply and there's a Dec there's a hu huge supply decrease. That's I said that wrong, didn't I? Let me say it differently. There's a huge demand, and no wonder I have a podcast called How to Lose Money, right? Uh, <laughs> there's a huge increase in demand and a significant decrease in supply. That's what I wanted to say. And so this is creating an imbalance, and an imbalance is often a great opportunity for us. Now, with single family with, with mobile home lot rents being only in the few hundred dollars a month range, let's say two to four to five hundred dollars a month typically, it's obviously very affordable and it also means that tenants are typically very sticky. Where else are they going to go to get a lot that a, a rent that low? Sure, they've got to also maintain the house on it, but it is a low cost situation for a lot of people, obviously. So my fifth reason I love mobile home parks is the tenants are sticky. Now, another reason the tenants are sticky is it's very, very expensive to move a mobile home. They own their own mobile home and let's say they want to move it. They're mad that you raised their lot rent by $50, which by the way, $50 on 300, do the math. That's a significant increase. You can't increase apartment rent that much typically, but imagine you increase the rent $50. They want to move. They're mad. They're going to have to come up with like five to $7,000 to move a mile or two or three away. And that is to save $50 a month. It typically doesn't make sense. So tenants are very sticky. And once you have a tenant in a mobile home park, they typically stay. Now, another cool thing that's not, I won't put it in one of the seven benefits is sometimes when they leave, they leave their house behind. There's a lot of very sad, tragic stories why people leave mobile homes behind. And like I said, I've had two left behind. Both had to get carted off to the dump. So it's not always great. But sometimes they'll leave a fully functioning mobile home behind that you can do minimum repair to and then resell to the next person that needs that spot. And I can tell you there is a really high demand. I can tell you stories about that. But there's a, there's a great demand for used mobile homes for the same reason we're talking about. And that is that there is a great demand for affordable housing in general. So benefit number five, tenants are sticky. Benefit number six, I don't have to deal with contractors, at least not the same type of contractors. Frankly, I tried to build a house once. Did I tell you this story? I think I told you before. And um, as a guy who didn't know how to put a doorknob on my office, uh, I probably wasn't a great guy to be building a house from the ground up. Give me a thumbs up, a like, or a heart or something if you agree with me on that. By the way, if you will just give us a thumbs up, a like, a share, it'll help Bigger Pockets know if you like this podcast. If you would share it with somebody else, share the recording, we'd really appreciate it. That helps Facebook, YouTube, etc. look positively on Bigger Pockets and it makes sure that I don't get fired, right? Okay, that's gonna be a benefit to me. My wife's gonna be thanking you for the thumbs up and the hearts today. But uh, another reason I like it again is I don't like to deal with contractors. I have not had a great success dealing with contractors because I don't know a whole lot about that kind of stuff myself. And I could tell you more stories in addition to the door doorknob. I actually bought a bulldozer for one of my contractors. How did, how did someone talk me into that? I had way more money than sense. Let me tell you. He taught me. He talked me into buying a bulldozer so he could finish the single-family house that he was building for me that I was supposed to make an eighty thousand dollar profit on. Instead, I lost forty thousand dollars on that one. It was good for me though because it got me out of single-family building and into other forms of real estate like flipping uh, waterfront lots 
and doing uh, two subdivisions, doing a multifamily ground up facility in North Dakota, which went really well. And then a hotel that lost money and propelled me into my career of how to lose money. But that's another story. Anyway, I don't like dealing with contractors and there's very, very little that can go wrong with a mobile home park. I mean, think about an apartment or a mobile home itself or a house. You know there's thousands of things that can go wrong and a lot of you have torn your hair out. Maybe you're even listening to me today because you're sick of dealing with your rental properties. Uh, well, there's a lot to deal with with rental properties, very little to deal with with mobile home parks. It's land. It's electricity. It's water and sewer that's all underground. It's hard to mess it up. It can happen, but typically it's much easier to deal with. The repairs, maintenance, and capital expense uh, needed for a mobile home park are much lower than any other kind of real estate I can think of except raw land. And raw land has a lot of risks and a lot of, it's very, very hard to monetize typically. So uh, another thing I like, again, is lower maintenance, lower repair, lower capital expenditures. Uh, seventh reason I love mobile home parks is the ownership. The ownership is typically very fragmented. Have you ever heard of the mom and pop effect? A lot of owners of mobile home parks are mom and pops. Uh, a lot of them uh, are getting out of the business. They're retiring. Uh, they're getting ready to move on. A lot of them didn't do a great job running their properties. You know, a lot of these mom and pops, they live in the mobile home park or they're friends with all the people there. And I think that's great. It's the American way, right? But I, I love that. But a lot of them, they have not raised the rents in years. And so while the market rent in an area might be $550 for a lot, um, my friend Kevin Bupp says that sometimes the lot rent that's actually being charged is like half of that. And so you can go in and you don't want to like double the price overnight, but you can go in and you can bring the park up, make it nicer, cleaner, more well-managed, give them a few more amenities. Um, and then you can begin to raise the rents. You can do better marketing. Most of these places, or I should say many of these places don't even have a website. You can do that, right? And so there's all kinds of things you can do to bring value, which will increase occupancy, theoretically raise the total rent and income. I heard about a vending machine the other day that actually vends out all kinds of household items and food and things like that that was in a mobile home park or multifamily, and it was making thousands of dollars a month for the owner. Think about that. Um, not sure any more details on that. If anybody on here knows about it, please tell us. Uh, we'd love to hear about a vending machine like that, but I know that that's out there. I think I heard about it from somebody on Bigger Pockets. But these these mom and pop operators that are often retiring, they do poor marketing, poor operations, poor maintenance. They don't raise the rents. They're just not optimized. And you can go in as a professional owner and optimize the uh, rents, op optimize the marketing, optimize the operations. Uh, number, I said there were seven benefits. I'm so happy today, I've got eight. So number eight is there is less buyer competition. Multifamily screaming hot. Single family homes, rentals, flips, they've always been screaming hot. Self-storage is becoming really popular and I love self-storage. Uh, there's so many things out there that are so popular. But think about this. You can probably relate to self-storage. Maybe you use it yourself. You can probably re relate to renting. Almost everybody has rented a home or an apartment at some point in their life. You can probably relate to office space. We've all used retail space as we go to TJ Maxx or whatever. They got a big sale on right now, by the way. Um, but <laughs> what am I saying? We have hardly ever can relate to mobile home parks. Most of us on this call, I dare say almost everybody on here has not lived or doesn't live in a mobile home park right now. And many of us don't even know somebody who does live in a mobile home park. So we can't relate to it as investors. People think it's kind of below them. And so, and by the way, I don't think that at all, but I'm saying the institutions, the life insurance companies, the REITs, a lot of these people ignore this asset class. In fact, 
um, when my friends Ryan and Jamie Smith decided to start investing in mobile home parks in the early 2000s, they said that everybody was completely dumbfounded. Why would you ever do that? Brandon Turner, our own Brandon Turner, said his people thought he was crazy just a year and a half ago when he said he was going to buy a mobile home park. And look at him now. He's in Hawaii while we're sitting here in the cold. What's up with that? Shout out to Brandon. Good job, buddy. Anyway, mobile home parks are largely overlooked and there are far more for sale. There's far more good deals because of the fragmented mom and pop operation and mom and pop market for these. So an eighth reason I love mobile home park investing again is there's less buyer competition. They're often overlooked and there are often many more opportunities to go in and dramatically raise value. There's all kinds of value add opportunities with mobile home parks and it's not something you would think of, but there really are. Like I said, the big fat vending machine that vends out all kinds of household items and food and soda pop. And um, I was going to make some jokes, but I'm just going to reframe myself. So you can imagine. So anyway, seven, no, eight reasons I love mobile home park investing. Number one, lower cost per unit. Number two, it's a portfolio move. It spreads your risk. Number three, there's lower repair cost and lower maintenance, lower capital expense. It's easier to maintain because it's land. Number four, there's a very high and increasing demand. Number, whatever my app, five, uh, there's a decreasing supply. Number six, sticky tenants. People don't like to move. Once they're there, they're going to be there likely for many years, even if you raise the rents. Um, number seven, fragmented owners, the mom and pop effect. And number eight, a lack of buyer competition. So I'm going to take a drink of coffee and you are going to ask me questions. We're going to wrap up a little early today. We're about 20 minutes in. So I'm going to wrap up pretty quick. So if you have a question, if you are on YouTube, um, I'm going to get to every one of your questions. But if you're on Facebook and you have not got your question answered, please copy and paste it back in. Because on the Facebook side, sometimes the questions seem to disappear. I know you guys probably think I'm a millennial uh, by my hair color and all that stuff, but I'm not. And... Uh, <laughs> I know I don't look a day over 40, right? But at any rate, um, seriously, in Facebook, I, I'm not able to see all the questions, and I've checked this out. Everybody knows that it's um, it's not my fault, right? Okay, right. So that's a joke. So Sean Irwin says, do you recommend on-site management for the mobile home parks? There are a couple great mobile home park training programs. One's from Frank and Dave, and another is from Kevin Bupp. Shout out to Kevin, Bigger Pockets member. And um, they have a variety of different uh, methodologies for that. I'm not an expert on that, but based on the size of the park, you can sometimes get a, an on-site manager. And there are actually professional companies that manage these, and it's, it's pretty cool. So uh, Jeff Gregory, hey, from Dallas. Um, okay, any more questions in Facebook? You're going to have to repeat them because I don't have them. So um, Derek... Illinois. Okay. Hey, Tiffany from Chattanooga. Love your town. Aurelio says trailer parks. Yes. No, they're manufactured housing communities. How dare you say trailer park? No, they're trailer parks. That's right. Um, okay. So um, uh, I do, we do call them MHCs now, by the way. So looking, uh, John Thomas says looking for GC sin in Nashville area. Any help? Um, not sure what you mean. What do you? What about creating a mobile home park? Aurelio, Aurelio, if you can get that done, good for you. It's very, very hard to pull it off. I would try to do it not near a big city with a lot of zoning. You know, Houston, funny place. Houston, right downtown, doesn't have zoning. So there are mobile homes next to ma mansions. I mean, it's crazy. If anybody's from Houston, tell me if I'm wrong. But I, I went there to build a Hyatt Hotel in 2012. And um, it didn't have any zoning. It was crazy. But anyway, I would definitely, if you want to try to do that, go to a small community, uh, not a big city that has a lot of res restrictions and regulations. Um, Werna, Werndo Otlab says, what about developing your own park? Yeah, same answer there. So 
Uh, what about, okay, Jesse, hello from Whittier, California. How much for the lamp in the background? Man, what a nice thing to say. Um, I love my lamp. I actually drove way out of the way to a, an antique shop in Marietta, Georgia, north of Atlanta, to get the lamp. And it wasn't as expensive as you might think. It was way under $1,000. Uh, but that's very nice of you. Thank you. Uh, hey, Super Goss 7 from Inland, California. Inland Empire. Yes, I've heard of that. Justin Browning, Seattle, looking for a cheaper home to rehab. Justin, how clean are mobile home parks you are trying to purchase? Um, there are some really trashy ones. Yeah, um, it, it can be. There are some trashy ones. I think you need to go in and try to take off your emotional hat and go, okay, this is trashy, but can it be changed? Is it within my power as an owner to change it? And that'll allow you to set aside your emotions, look past the trash you see, and say, wait a minute, I can actually still make something of this. And so as you know, in commercial real estate, the um, value is derived by the net operating income and the cap rate. So you can still get a good deal even on a trashy mobile home park and it can still be okay and you can actually raise it, uh, raise the, uh, the look and feel after that. Uh, Bo Bray says, where's the best place to look for mobile home park deals? I really don't know, but I think Frank and Dave, if you uh, Google their mobile home university or whatever, I think that they have a whole big listing of mobile home parks nationwide. So that's the best thing I can tell you. You can also look on LoopNet, but honestly, the deals on there aren't always the best. So um, Joe G says, we need to start recycling effort for mobile homes. You can make two tiny homes from one frame. We need to create affordable homes. Great thought, Joe G. Um, Bob and Ann Border from Iowa. Hello, Carrie from Indianapolis. Joe G says, uh, okay, so the cut in half. Wow, so two tiny homes out of one mobile home. That's really interesting. Where can you find mom and pop owners, says Michael Bloxham. Um, I think on LoopNet, maybe check with your local realtors. There's occasionally on the MLS, things like this. Uh, Carrie, okay, super guys. Same question, looks like we'll be on a commercial side. Also wondering about funding. Guys, I forgot to tell you one thing I love about mobile home parks. You can get fantastic debt. Now, my friend Ryan Smith, who I'm actually investing with in mobile home parks, uh, Ryan tells me you can get Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac debt at like a whole point lower than you can get for apartments, I said, lower, wait a minute, you mean worse, right? He said, no, better, 1% better interest rate, which is like a 20% savings, 5% interest rate, let's say, on apartments, 4% for mobile home parks. What? And I said, why is that? He said, because the default rate is so, so low. I said, wait a minute, multifamily is practically zero. He said, yeah, mobile home parks are too. Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae love mobile home parks, but check this out. You can actually get two, two supplemental loans on a Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae mobile home park loan. That means you can, let's say you borrow $2 million today and you raise the value of the park over, say, four years by, say, another, I don't know, let's say a million. You can get, let's say, another uh, $700,000 out by doing supplemental debt. And let's say seven years later, you've raised the value some more, you can do another supplemental loan and extract more equity. That means you can extract equity, hand money back to your investors, and that means if you can hand all the money back to the investors, guess what? If they have zero in, every return after that, every distribution you give them is essentially an infinite return, okay? I talked to a guy earlier today. He said, I'm getting infinite return on my investment because I got the capital back and I'm still owning the property. I'm owning my share of the property. Infinite return. I like that. So I don't know what you think. Uh, Bo Bray says, where's the best place to look for the parks? Yep. Um, uh, all over. I think the very best way, by the way, is driving around, getting in your car. Some of these aren't even on Google Maps. and Google. Well, they're probably all on Google Earth. But uh, some of them don't have websites. That's what I meant to say. So like you can't just punch in the name. So those are the overlooked kind of deals that you want. By the way, one disadvantage to mobile home parks, and Brandon Turner brought this out, is that the data on them is real sketchy. Like you might get, um, like you might get financials that look like this. You know, my notes for this podcast. So like, you know, coffee stains on them. 
and um, you know, really a, a mess. So again, that's the mom and pop effect. That's your advantage because you can figure out what that place is worth. You should be able to, no matter what, um, no matter how bad uh, the financials are. And if you can look past a lot of that garbage, you can find great deals that are very hard to find in the rest of the world right now. So success matrix, I wish this guy would answer some questions. Okay, how do you find mobile home parks that are for sale? Um, well, like I said, Frank and Dave's, LoopNet, et cetera. Um, do I own any? I own one mobile home and I am about to, I am days away from investing with Ryan Smith uh, in his mobile home park fund and I'm really excited about that and I actually wish I didn't own the mobile home that I still own. How, do you, how would you like getting texts from your tenant saying, hey, I'm sorry I couldn't pay my rent the last three months. Uh, I need, can, can I borrow some money? I need to put in a new air conditioning unit and fix my transmission and I'll be able to pay you someday. That's what it's like to own a mobile home, but owning a mobile home park is quite different. Trust me. So Danny Ramos says, I've been several, I've seen several being sold in Orlando and turned into subdivisions. Yes. Decreasing supply. Hey, Danny. Um, Wade says, you're right. It's lovely. Houston neighborhoods are kind of funny. Yeah, Wade, they are funny. Daryl says Houston does not have zoning. Yeah, that's that's what I found when I was there seven years, six years ago. Joey Nelson, how does financing work? Is it difficult to get? You know, I don't. You know, there are banks out there. I still think, even though I mentioned Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae and all that, uh, there are probably local banks. Check out Live Oak Bank. Now, I don't have any tie to them, but I think they're based in. Um, Wilmington, North Carolina or something, or Charleston. Uh, they do a lot of uh, self-storage units and I think self-storage facilities and they do, they probably do some other things like that, but check out community banks, check out credit unions. Sometimes they have way less strict rules, especially if you're a beginner. And I assume if you're on here, um, then you're thinking more about, <laughs> you know, that you might be more of a beginner in the mobile home park space. Uh, oh, that's that's fine. Success matrix. How much experience and capital do you need to qualify for financing? I'll tell you, if you partner with some of these guys, I bet you Kevin Bupp um, or Frank and Dave or people like that might partner with you and that they, they would bring all the experience. You could get the financing and all that. As far as you uh, being experienced, there, that's a tough question. That's another reason I would really consider going to a... Um, uh, I would really consider going to a local lender because I think they're going to be way more lax with that. I don't have a definite answer. And if you can see, I'm dodging the question uh, because I have never went to finance my own mobile home park, though my friend Ryan has done hundreds of them, literally hundreds uh, for the last like 15 years. So Arthur says, I would do a seniors only mobile home Park, the regular mobile home parks are sketchy and full of problems and some drug problems. What? You've got to be kidding. Drugs? I currently have two in Orange County in California. I was just in Orange County. What a nice place you have there. You guys are willing to pay like that. What is it? 13% extra tax to live in California. And Orange County is even a little higher, I think. But great place. Um, that's great advice. So Arthur says, get a seniors only um, mobile home park, and I can totally understand. And thank you, Arthur, for your kind words um, earlier. So, um, okay, Ravi says, how much management involvement is required compared to, say, a 50-unit multifamily? I would say just on repairs and maintenance alone and the fact that you're not moving people in and out every month. I mean, typically a, mobile, a multifamily has 50, 45 to 55% turnover a year and about 50% cost uh, of your gross income in managing it, it's got to be way less. I mean, we're talking land versus toilets, tenants, and trash. Now, I get mobile home parks are going to have some trash and all that stuff too, but it's got to be way less. And if you can have a standard of making it Disneyland clean, let me tell you, speaking of Orange County, guys, um, I know it's in a different county, but... Um, Disneyland clean should be your standard and you can have the nicest place for what you have, whether it's a C class, B class, whatever it is, they actually call it stars in the mobile home world. 
uh, one, two, three, four, or five stars. Whatever star level you're at, keep it Disneyland clean. Keep it nice. Make it a nice place to live. Mark Monroe says, I came in late. Who is Frank and Mike that sell parks? Okay, so it's Frank and Dave. Frank and Dave have the best internet presence that I've seen, as well as Kevin Bupp, for um, teaching the world how to buy and sell mobile home parks. So, um, and they also have a website that allows you to um, uh, buy and invest in mobile home parks. So, I am about to wrap up. So, if anybody else has questions, I would love to hear. Okay, so Dew says... I'm going to read this before I say it out loud. Okay, now it's really interesting. DU says it's very brave of you investing even more when the central bank is going is doing QT. I hope it goes well for you. Thanks, DU. Can you explain that a little more? I wouldn't mind. I'll, I'll tell the audience um, across the three channels here uh, when you tell me. So... Uh, we're going to be wrapping up in about a minute if I don't hear anything else from you. Arthur says, you're doing a great job on the show today. How can we get in touch with you and possibly even a JV? I'm looking in Memphis and Texas. Arthur, uh, again, my name's Paul Moore. My company is Wellings Capital, and you can get hold of me through Bigger Pockets. So would love to connect with any of you. If you want to talk about mobile home park investing, self-storage investing, I wrote a book called The Perfect Investment on Multifamily. And people might say, um, oh, quantitative tightening, of course. Um, uh, I wrote a book on multifamily, and you might wonder why I'm talking about mobile home parks. Actually, mobile home parks are a form of multifamily. I just never thought of that till just now. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to get fired from bigger pockets. So before I get fired, I better go. Quantitative tightening. Yeah, um, DU, the, the, they love mobile home parks. They love multifamily. The default rate is incredibly low. Default rates are actually going up again. Uh, Paul, Danny says, just thinking you like mobile home parks. How about an RV park? Uh, oh, thanks, Arthur. Um, yeah, you know what? I have a friend who have done RV parks. It's a different world, and it's a, it can be a little bit more like Airbnb. So check that out. Uh, Jake says, what are your thoughts about converting mobile home parks to tiny home communities? I don't know anything about that. I honestly don't, so I'm not going to comment on it anymore. But I am going to wrap up before I get fired. So thanks, everybody. Uh, have a great weekend. I'm going to stay on. I think my Facebook feed will... Uh, or my YouTube feed will stay on so I can answer a few more questions offline. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. I'm Paul Moore. This is Bigger Pockets. It's been great having you today. Have a great day.